pause car <laughs> problem recording during the day this podcast contains explicit language a few days ago i called the fake news the enemy of the people and they are they are the enemy of the people welcome to the james chambers show i'm your host for this podcast james chambers Recently, I had a conversation with a friend that ranged from in-person dialogue to email. As far as I know, the conversation is still going, though I am waiting on a reply from the last exchange. For that reason, I'm not going to delve into specific statements made by this person. Uh, one, because, well, I haven't received permission to do so, and it would be a breach of trust, in my opinion, not to have that wall of personal conversations and what I share with you. But also, this friend is not available to correct any errors or assumptions that I make on their behalf. I'm going to have to hedge, you know, just a little bit. However, this interaction stuck with me long after the initial exchange, and I wanted to talk about some of the general issues that were brought up. After writing the script for a while, I realized it was too confusing to keep referring to my friend as they or their or my friend. So I'll call him Monty for the sake of clarity. Monty and I have differing views on nearly every aspect of social and political life. He's conservative, uh, maybe even libertarian, or at the very least libertarian leaning. Clearly, I am not. He is deeply religious. I am not. These two basic characteristics unfold into a tapestry of interwoven topics ranging from education to financial policy to social issues to environmental views and so many other things. In this specific conversation, Monty and I had a dispute regarding the legitimacy of the mainstream press. And I'm not talking about fringy, hyperpartisan hack sites. I'm talking about the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, PBS, Reuters, the Associated Press, Wall Street Journal, the big three, you know, all of those main, literally mainstream media outlets. Monty's assertion is that all of these outlets are leftist and maintain a hard left-leaning bias. That being the case, they can all be dispensed with as being unreliable and even disreputable. He will readily agree that right-leaning outlets like Fox or The Blaze or Breitbart are just as disreputable. Immediately, I take issue with the false equivalents. And it's not necessary to examine The Blaze or Breitbart. We all know that they're propaganda. However, Fox News is known for its editorializing and opinion shows. Its hard news programming is not nearly as viewed as, say, Hannity or The Five. Just because Fox uh, has some hard news reporting embedded in its programming does not change the fact that the channel is clearly designed to promote a conservative worldview at best and propagandize at worst. To conflate Fox with Reuters or The New York Times is to claim that a donkey is a horse because it has four legs. It's just false. If you wanted to compare Fox with, say, Alternet or da the Daily Kos, okay, that's fine. That is a largely fair comparison. And all that being said, we did agree that the right side of the spectrum is clearly biased. What we couldn't agree on is that the so-called mainstream media is openly and clearly biased to the left. Monty flatly rejects the media's objectivity in news reporting. The assertion is that they're simply out to get President Trump, and prior to Trump, their, their agenda was to prop up President Obama and so on down the presidential and social line. His claimed disrepute of the media implies that not only are the large media sources presenting false or misleading information, but they're likely making things up or at least spinning information to serve a left biased agenda. To Monty, this is obvious. There's no doubt. And more to the point, to deny that fact, air quote fact, is to prove your own inability to either interpret the information presented or to be suckered into following the herd. Now, to be fair, I have to hedge a little bit and say that this is my interpretation of his position, and I'm sure he will correct me if I'm mistaken. And, well, if that's the case, I'll make a correction on this show. I have heard arguments like this before, as I'm sure many of you have as well. The assertion that the mainstream media is a hard, left-biased collection of provocateurs seems highly unlikely for several reasons, not the least of which is financial. And I'll get to that in just a second, but we should all look at the basis of what journalism is. At its core, journalism is observing and accurately reporting information to the public. How is that possible given that every human being is controlled on some level by an unconscious bias? Well, I'll talk about bias in just a little bit as well, but here's what the Society of Professional Journalists has to say about their core tenets. One, ethical journalism should be accurate and fair. Journalists should be honest and courageous in gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. 
two, ethical journalism treats sources, subjects, and colleagues and members of the public as human beings deserving of respect. Three, the highest and primary obligation of ethical journalism is to serve the public. Four, ethical journalism means taking responsibility for one's work and explaining one's decision to the public. Even with my minuscule education in journalism during college, I know these things to be true. The basic tenets of ethical journalism are taught from the outset in all So You Want to Be a Journalist 101 courses. Now, is every journalist following every ethical rule every time? Well, no, of course not. Is every journalist 100% accurate 100% of the time? No, of course not. That is why retractions and corrections exist. Is there a way to self-regulate errors and ethical missteps? Yeah, it's called peer review. Science does the same thing. If a researcher in a lab publishes a completely specious article about an experiment and the outcomes of that experiment, they're going to get called out, usually in a quick and stout fashion. If a journalist writes a story with incorrect information or missing facts, other reporters from other institutions are inevitably going to discover it and print their own more accurate versions of the story, not to mention the fact that the writer's story will pass through fact checkers and editors before publication. If you want to argue that all journalists or their larger organizations are presenting bogus or intentionally misleading information, you must then assume that there is a grand conspiracy between all of the mainstream media outlets to obfuscate and mislead the public. It's just not plausible. Occam's razor applies. I mean, if a major news outlet is reporting on a situation and they get something completely wrong, it was more than likely unintentional. And to be clear, I'm drawing a distinction between news reporting and editorializing and opinion writing. Those are by definition biased by the authors, but facts are facts, and opinions about facts are just opinions, even if they're informed. As an example, let's assume the Associated Press uh, reports that, quote, President Trump flies to India to negotiate trade agreements. Well, that, that's a simple statement of fact. Now, the left-wing alternate site reports that Trump flies to India to bull Narendra Modi on trade. Well, the fact is still the same, but the editorializing on the motive is obvious. Next, the hyperpartisan Infowars runs the headline, Donald Trump runs to India to kick their brown ass in a trade war for America. Ah! Well, it wouldn't surprise me if they actually ran that headline someday. But again, the fact is still the same. President Trump flew to India to discuss trade. Everything else is editorializing. Being a savvy news consumer allows you to see the difference and acknowledge that you can get facts even in the most partisan of sources as long as you cross-reference and verify the fact. I don't endorse looking to Infowars for facts, though. Just, just don't even bother with them. Uh, seriously, that site is fucking useless and Alex Jones is a deranged hack. Just to put that out into the ether. I'm setting fires everywhere! So I touched on the financial aspect of accurate reporting a while back, and I think the implications of accurate reporting for financial gain is pretty obvious. The more reliable you are as an organization, the more eyeballs you're going to attract. The more eyeballs you attract, the more subscriptions or likes or shares you will get. All of those things are revenue generating. And yes, that is the same strategy that shill extremist outlets use as well, but that's just basic marketing. And this is where being a savvy and informed consumer becomes important. The value and integrity of journalism is being tested under Donald Trump and the era of alternative facts. He said the media and journalists are the enemy of the people. The enemy of the people. He said that repeatedly. There was this little part about the Constitution. Um, it talks about... Uh, what? Uh, a free book. No, 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 no. Uh, a free... Um, Fluff and tuck. No, damn it. Mm. A free press. Yeah, that's it. The framers of this country knew then how significant a free press is to the foundation of a free democracy. To listen to the president of the United States call the free press the enemy of the people only proves that he is unfit and utterly dangerous to the basic promises of our country. <sighs> so <clears throat> that would be editorializing. Let me jump back. The value of quality journalism is being tested under this president. Now is exactly the time that the major news organizations are going to promote fair, factual reporting so as to be above reproach. Not that Trump or his sycophants care about the facts. Damn it. Sorry. <clears throat> 
The better quality of journalism, the more financial support the major outlets are going to get. There. Got it. Another fundamental question that plagues journalists and is a tool used by their critics is bias. So let's look specifically at bias. And we all have biases and we have them against all kinds of things. It's impossible not to have bias. It's part of our intellectual makeup. We use biases to make split second decisions on how to behave and how to interact and how to exchange ideas. And even more fundamentally, we use bias to interpret a situation and apply our fight or flight instincts accordingly. We simply cannot divorce ourselves from it. To do so would be inhuman. However, we can train ourselves to understand our preconceptions, to recognize our biases, and work to overcome them. And we all do that on a daily basis. I think that fear of implicit bias goes to the heart of Monty's apprehension of the media. The problem is, I, I think the apprehension is misplaced. Monty is basically creating a straw man to assert that there is an extreme bias using the very narrow grouping of media outlets like CNN, for example, and journalistic errors or retracted stories as proof that the overall mainstream media landscape is nothing more than a liberal morass. The problem is that taking a narrow and implicitly biased sample in order to make a larger sweeping claim about the media landscape is, again, a straw man fallacy. In deference to my friend, again, this is my takeaway from his position. I am making some assumptions. Please correct me if I'm not being accurate. How do journalists actually manage to overcome their implicit biases? How do they rise above their own confirmation bias? Well, first, let's be clear. Of course, journalists have bias. They have their own worldview. They're human beings. Making sure that their personal biases don't influence their work is really the issue. So let's take one of the fundamental concepts of good journalism. What can be seen and what can be verified? Another concept is you don't run one source stories. You may get a statement from a single source, but that's not a fact until it's verified. Lots of times we hear a source close to the president or a source within the community, and that's fine. Those are statements by a person, not an assertion of fact. Just because the viewer or listener of the news outlet takes that statement as fact does not mean that it is or was offered as such. Some other tactics to remove bias. Cross-check with other journalists. Dig and research the story. Just like any other profession, it's about professionalism, integrity, and ethics. While it can be extremely difficult at times, disconnect emotionally and ask relentless questions. The process of journalism and editing is intentionally designed to strip bias from that process, just like the scientific method is designed to control variables and confirmation bias, so too is the journalistic method. To put it simply, people are biased. The process of good journalism is not. Just based on what I've covered today, I think we can agree that logically and practically, there's really not much reason to be concerned about a hard left bias in the mainstream media. Creating that monster, the bias and unfairness monster, is an amazing tool used by the right for the purposes of sowing discontent and promoting distrust of institutions. Make no mistake, sowing distrust is a fundamental desire of the conservative right to tear down the administrative state and to disrupt institutions. Rallying people against facts and authenticity is one tool in the arsenal. Well, how is that tool utilized? Well, like this. You can't trust the media. They're the enemy of the people. You can only trust me to tell you the truth. I sound familiar? Well, here's a direct quote from the President of the United States, Donald John Trump, less than a week ago at a speech given to the VFW in Kansas City. Quote, stick with us. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Don't trust the enemy of the people, the liberal fake news media. I'll tell you the truth. Only me. Stick with us and everything will turn out to be amazing. Authoritarian or cult leader? You pick. It's a choose-your-own-adventure of eroding democracy. I mean, this is some scary shit to come out of the most powerful person in the country and one of the most powerful people on the planet. I mean, some of you might point out that this statement needs more context. Well, fine. It was in the context of describing supposed international trade imbalances, but the point remains the same. You cannot trust the news media, says the great leader. 
They are lying to you. I alone will tell you the truth. I mean, this is truly Orwellian stuff. Oh, come on, James, I hear you cry. You're being just as hyperbolic and ridiculous as the leftist mainstream media. Well, here's more evidence that we need to be paying close attention to what is really happening in our country and why journalism is so deeply important. Recall the Trump-Putin press conference in Helsinki last week. Yeah, it's only been one week. Jeff Mason of Reuters asked Vladimir Putin if he wanted Donald Trump to win the 2016 election and did he deploy support to that end. Here's the exchange. Found in an President appropriate Putin, did you want legal President framework. Trump to win the election and did you direct any of your officials to help him do that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Because he talked about bringing the U.S.-Russia relationship back to normal. Did you catch that? Yeah, Vlad wanted Trump to win the 2016 election, and yes, he helped make that happen. This is the Russian president, live, on camera, saying that he directed his government agents to help elect Donald Trump. But maybe he just said yes, he, he wanted Trump to win, and that's all. <laughs> no. I think it's more than fair to reject that premise. Vladimir Putin was a lieutenant colonel in the KGB before becoming president of Russia. Do you really think that he just missed the second part of a simple question in a press conference? I mean, really? I sure as hell don't. He knew exactly what he was being asked, and he replied. You want some evidence? Here. The White House knows that Putin was being honest. In the official White House transcript of the press conference, the first part of the question, the did you want President Trump to win the election is simply gone. That question is the key question. The official White House video is also skillfully edited to redact that exchange. After pressure from, yes, news outlets, the White House is saying that it was a technical error in the audio and nothing malicious. Nothing to see here, folks. Uh, move along. But wait, the Russian transcript of the same event excludes Jeff Mason's question entirely, completely gone. Now, why is that? And why was the key question about Russia's intent in our official transcript scrubbed? If journalists from the Atlantic hadn't caught the omission in the official White House transcript, do you think it would have ever been corrected? If reporters hadn't been watching and scrutinizing the veracity of the information being generated by the White House, would this have all just slipped away into the night? How long would it have been before you couldn't even find the original live video of the exchange to challenge the omission in the official account? This is what good journalism is for, to hold the people in power accountable to reality, but not according to the president. No, stick with us. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. What you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. Yeah, well, I saw it. You just heard it. He would just prefer that we didn't. Postscript on all of this. No, there's no hard liberal mainstream media bias. Not in the newsrooms anyway. One thing I believe is that no matter what I point out, no matter my argument, I will not sway my friend into moderating his conviction. Monty is who he is, and, and I believe he will maintain his vision of the media as a leftist potpourri of conspirators and fallacy all to subvert something. And there's the problem. I really don't know what the supposed goal of this conspiracy is. One thing I've not gotten yet is a reason why. Just why? What is there to gain in this grand leftist media scheme? Is it just a social experiment to win the culture war? Or is it a creeping communist plot? I'm totally speculating because I really don't have an answer, nor do I understand the conspiratorial nature of the hypothesis. Again, Occam's razor dictates that the answer to all of this is simple. Conspiracies are hard to maintain. It's more likely that the mainstream press is attempting to generate content that is factual and unbiased or balanced bias as a matter of integrity and necessity. The simplest explanation is usually the correct one. So, how do you, how do you get your information? Let me just make a recommendation. Shop smart, not hard in terms of the news. Look to the dozen or so major players in the media landscape and you will be pretty well informed. Recognize editorializing and take it for what it is. 
Be savvy. Be alert in your media consumption and verify. If an assertion is being made, check the sources. A simple Google search will do. If there are no references or links to the data in the article, be suspicious. Even the beatified Ronald Reagan understood to trust but verify. If you do these things, you'll be fine. You won't have to stranger danger your media. No matter the result of the conversation that Monty and I are having, we will be friends at the end. I mean, and that is more valuable than winning some stupid argument about media bias. Although, I mean, clearly I won. I mean, it's obvious at this point. I await your reply, Monty. Post Postscript. I found some really interesting things online while I was researching this episode. First, if you want to have a good basic understanding of the bias and quality of the news and information that you consume, Google Media Bias Chart 3.1. There you'll find a continuously updated graph and analysis of various media outlets and their quality. If you aren't, if you aren't sure about the veracity of the chart, search around. Look for confirmation or conflicting data. It's good exercise in practicing skepticism. One other thing that blew my freaking mind yesterday was a testing site designed and set up by Harvard called the Implicit Association Test. And you can find that at implicit.harvard.edu or just search Implicit Association Test Harvard. If you want to challenge yourself about your own internal subconscious biases, check out this website. I, I, like I said, oh my God, it, it blew me away. I truly thought my results would be different uh, than what they came back as. I mean, and look, I'm not going to lie. It was actually really uncomfortable. Um, it was challenging to have my unconscious biases brought forward in such a stark way. For that reason, I highly recommend it. Thank you for listening to the When the Bias Meets the Road episode of The James Chamber Show. Information from Harvard, the Society of Professional Journalists, Psychology Today, CNN, Donald Trump via Twitter, Google, Time Magazine, Britannica.com, and a couple of dictionaries were all used in today's show, and probably more. Leave your comments in the section below or email the show at realjcshow2017, that's realjcshow2017 at gmail.com or on Twitter at realjcshow. Thank you again for listening. I appreciate each and every one of your support and I'll catch you next time. That being the case, they can all be dis uh, no.